Hello everyone and welcome to a new short episode from the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today, after a long wait since our introductory episode, we will be looking at Pikmin, again, now focusing on the specific types of Pikmin rather than on their functioning as a species. I can't believe it took me so long to get back to the Pikmin, especially since lots of people asked to see this one after our introduction. So here goes a thank you to everyone who asked to see these creatures, and to our patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. If you too are enjoying these videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing or joining our Patreon. And if you haven't watched the first video, I recommend you do so to get a little more background on the Pikmin as a species, and especially their relationship with the onions. Now, let's get to the Pikmin. The first and most commonly seen subcast of Pikmin is the Red Pikmin, a soldier cast. This cast is identifiable by its red color which stands out from its environment as a warning to other creatures, as well as a thin, thorn-like projection in its front area, which is useful both when hunting and destroying obstacles. The red Pikmin are also notable for their resistance to heat and fire, which is granted by its red waxy covering. This resistance is greatly useful as creatures that share the Pikmin's environment have developed a wide array of weapons and defense mechanisms that involve the use of heat and fire, in a somewhat similar way to modern-day bombardier beetles. The second of these subcasts is the blue Pikmin, whose color allows it to disappear inside shallow puddles that reflect the blue sky. This cast is semi-aquatic, gifted with small branching structures similar to fins in their extremities, as well as modified stomata that allow blue Pikmin to more efficiently obtain diluted carbon dioxide and oxygen from water. Other types of Pikmin, lacking these adaptations, can easily sink into the water and die. Next up are the yellow Pikmin a scout cased specialized in movement and contact with dangerous surfaces. Their body is very light in comparison to most Pikmin, and they are adorned with two huge flat growths that give it a wider surface. Thanks to these structures and their light weight, yellow Pikmin can climb and throw themselves from up high, lightly gliding through the air and more easily traversing the environment. These Pikmin also have a waxy coat similar to that of the red Pikmin, but this coat seems to mostly isolate them from volatile compounds. However, it has also been observed to protect them from electricity. While electricity is not the most common defense mechanism among predators, it is very present in their environment, as a lot of human technology keeps working long after being discarded electricity is still running through it. Amazingly enough, traces of graphite in this waxy covering give it the ability to not only isolate itself from electricity, but to also conduct it around its body without harming them. Applications of this are rare in natural conditions, so it seems to be mostly an accidental feature rather than an adaptation. Due to traces of graphite on its body and its gliding structures, it is believed the yellow Pikmin was the base for the evolution of other two subcasts of Pikmin, Rock and Winged Pikmin. And that's it for a speculative biology look into the first three types of Pikmin. I'm really glad you guys enjoyed the first episode so much, since I had a lot of fun doing the episode itself. With this one, it was really fun trying to see how the Pikmin's characteristics, created pretty much in function of the obstacles that were placed into the game, could fit non-redundant casts fit for cooperation in a real colony of organisms. And, as a note, 
This will be made as a series of shorter episodes. Since drawing 10 or some types of Pikmin all at once, with them having mostly similar body structures, might not be as fun to watch or as fun to draw, which I hope you will understand. For now, we have the first three types of Pikmin, and I hope you guys enjoyed the rationale for them. What do you guys think? Which of these Pikmin is your favorite? And which do you hope to see the most in the future? Please tell us in the comments below, as well as any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.